Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Teresa. We're talking design style for the renters today. Guests Allison Victoria from DIY Network's Kitchen Crashers. HGTV design star and fabulous designer Kim Miles. Rhoda Vickers from the Southern Hospitality blog, where I will offend her with my Southern accent. Because you're from Cape Cod. <laughs> and Ariane Belazar from Inspired to Style blog are joining us today to talk all about the renters, and it's happening right now on my Fix It Up Life. Sanding walls before you paint? Do it the hide way, not the hard way, with high dust-free sander. Attach to your wet dry vac and go. No dry wall dust on your no-tough clean. Buy online at Amazon.com. And you're inside my Fix It Up life, and we're talking about apartments today. And it's not because that we're getting an apartment, but I, you know, everybody probably has had an apartment at one time or another in their lives, unless I, they're like independently, like fashionably wealthy with all kinds of inheritance and stuff like that. Well, one of the things that I love about apartments is what? they, like you said, everyone probably has lived in one, whether it's a college dormitory or it's a palace on Park Avenue. Yes. Apartments cover that area of shelter that I don't think about that much, but millions and millions of people live with every day. Yes. And, you know, the restrictions, which I always found really frustrating living in an apartment and also living in a condo where there are a lot of restrictions, too, on what you can and can't do. And, you know, like you have to deal with the ugly light fixtures. You have to deal with not being able to paint the walls the way you want to. You have to deal with those vertical blinds and all kinds of stuff that you're like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. But there are so many new things that are available these days. That can help you short circuit that I'm stuck. I can't paint the walls. I can't do a new dishwasher. And I think like the command strip thing is like like every renter's dream because you can hang anything on your walls and you can actually do like hang curtain rods with command strip hooks too. Oh yeah, and I remember an apartment that I rented once where I had to work at home, at my home, I needed a desk and I needed more than just a desk. So I had to eat the security deposit because I screwed a desk to the wall, I made <laughs> one. You know what, tell you what, I know this is a rental place, you're gonna paint it anyway. Wait, I'm sorry, you screwed a desk to the wall? It was the beginning of my now obviously prolific television career, I hasten to add. I made a desk out of two by tens, two two by tens wide, and I invented sort of the way that I do this. It wrapped the entire room. It was great. I love that desk. That sounds insane. And, and I it, just have a new, I have a name for a new show for HGTV that you could do. <laughs> you do this every week. You, you it's should called be. I Screwed That. <laughs> All the different things that you're like putting together. Like, I'll just screw some boards together. It'll solve every problem. It's true. Roy Berenson from Popular Mechanics was right when he called you the two by guy. Because you I, are. I am. I make stuff out of two buys and it's great. I sanded it down. I finished it with a urethane finish. It was great. The only problem though was it was carpet and that's a whole other story. Wait, wait, wait. Carpet on the desk? Yeah, it was hard to write. It was hard, you know, <laughs> just your pen kept going through because I was writing on car carpeted it. No, the floor was carpet. Okay. The floor was carpet. When I so was when a you roll kid. your chair around, yeah. you can't roll it. You're just stuck. That's true. You need to get one of those like plastic things, those old style like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that curl up under your chair and but trip you know, everybody. When I was a kid, I thought it would be kind of awesome to have carpet on the ceiling and the walls and the floor. I don't know why, but I, it's a terrible idea, but I always thought it was fascinated. Why is carpet only on the floor? It is and it isn't. A and bad we live idea. in a house now where we have absolutely no carpet. But we are giving away some really cool tools today, though, from Hyde. Yes, uh, uh, Hyde's Renters or Apartment Dwellers Survival Pack, it, stuff you can use to fix things. But it's not just for renters. Anybody needs these tools. That's in why their, I said yeah. apartment dwellers, man. Yes. You can own your apartment. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So we're asking everybody to chime in and tell us what they think of temporary wallpaper. And we've gotten some really good comments so far because 
I think that a lot of people have strong opinions about things like temporary wallpaper. And also, you know, temporary decals, too. Like, you know, you could put action figures up on your wall, too. Why? Is this a show for grown-ups? I just got paused. Why would I want Iron Man full size on my wall? Am I Jack? No, you like Batman. You wouldn't have Iron Man on your wall. I wouldn't have Iron Man. He's lame. No, Jack's friend Nate, he would have Iron Man. He'd have Iron Man because he's got to be propped up. Batman does it himself like all Spartan Race style. He doesn't need any jetpacks in his feet. But doesn't he have that guy, isn't it Arthur or something? And then he's got like Robin and... (laughs) There's They're people. Okay. Well, we have to go to break, and we'll be back in just a minute with Allison Victoria, the lovely, wonderful Allison. Add more curb appeal to your home. Create a memorable entrance with Thermatru fiberglass doors and five pond synthetic trim that won't warp, crack, or rot and give you those rich details that make your home a showpiece. Make your great entrance by visiting Thermatrue.com and Fipon.com. You're in it. We're back. It's my Fix It Up life. Yeah, and it we, is. we are talking design solutions for the apartment. Whether you rent yeah. that apartment and you're a temporary denizen of that place, denizen of that den, and thought of the word denizen since like high school i think you're like having a little mark party today uh, hey, I, it, you know what i think i need to celebrate i like i dressed up for you i'm wearing a blazer do you know the last time i wore a blazer was to your job interview <laughs> for my fix it up live mark <laughs> excuse me uh Teresa, where do you see yourself mark, in five mark, years i would really like to be able to host this show with you i know that we're married but i don't want any nepotism at all in this interview but i think you're pretty hot look we've first of all you're right second flattery will get you everywhere third crash <gasps> we're getting crashed crash <laughs> am i in the middle of a home center right now where are you Allison Victoria? <laughs> I am not in the middle of a home improvement store right now, which is, is kind of different for me. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? I'm in Chicago, and I am getting ready to host my brother's engagement party. Oh, wow. So a little different, a little different. But I was just in Vegas crashing, so it's uh, huh. a fun place to be. Wow. Now, you crash in Vegas and you crash in Chicago. And, you know, I bet everybody else around the country is like, come and crash us. I know. And I keep thinking the winter in Chicago is so brutal that I had to I had to get out for this winter. So it's just so nice to be somewhere sunny. Plus, I live in Vegas as well. So I've got my, my place there and then in Chicago. So it's a good... It's a good mix, but that's where I'm keeping it for now. Well, let me let me ask you a personal question before we dive into solutions for apartment design. And, and I apologize in advance if this may be offensive because I can't really censor my husband. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> uh, no, um, it is because we get this too. You know, we'll post something on our Facebook page or whatever, and the first reply is, "Come to my house. I live in wherever." Arizona, or I live in Maine. When are you coming to my house? When are you coming to my house? You must get asked that every time you interact with someone. When are you coming to yeah, my, exactly my town? Yeah, exactly. The only thing. I mean, it's so <laughs> funny to uh, to hear it because then it's like it never gets old because you can't believe that number one, people know who you are. Number two, you know that they really need your help, and so you, you know it's it's very. I don't know. It's just, it's a good feeling, but that's the only question I get. I, I go speak at home shows or just go to the airport and it's like, when are you coming to Michigan? So yeah, that is, that's number one, number one question. Well, you know, I am pretty fascinated by your whole lookbook. I have to say. Thank you. That- I, I am so excited about it and I'm going kind of full force with it in, in March and doing some really cool collaborations. So I'm really excited. Now, for everybody who doesn't know what this is, because I think this is sort of an amazing idea in the world of design and consultation and technology, but please tell everybody what this is and how they can contact you for it. So the reason I started this is because I've had my own design firm for going on nine years. And so I work with private clients from residential to commercial to hospitality. 
and with the show and my schedule, I wasn't able to do as much um, as I was before. So, um, and also the fact that it's like, I want to be able to help more people, more people than just, you know, my higher end clients or, you know, people that, that are full on clients and how can I do it? And so this workbook is a true DIY approach to design. It is the easiest thing in the world. You know, if you want your kitchen, your bedroom, your powder room, your studio apartment, whatever it is you need design help on, what you do is you simply download the homework that's on my blog, alisonvictoria.com, under lookbook. You download it. You fill out that information, and pretty much it's very rudimentary. Like, where do you normally shop? What's your budget? What are your plans for the room? How do you use the space, et cetera? And then do some variable measurements for me, and I teach you how to do the measuring. And then send me some photos. And um, if you want to send me, you know, I've got a new, uh, it's an app. It's a free app called Design Mine. And it's a way to create your own design boards with using, using images from, you know, there's over 50,000 to pick in that library, or you can upload them from anywhere, Pinterest, whatever. But then I get an idea of what your design aesthetic is. And six weeks later, in the mail, you get this beautiful custom box. And right when you open it, you walk right into your new space with a full-on 3D color rendering of your new, let's say, kitchen. And... You know, the next design board is all of the samples um, from your butcher block countertop to the stain that I used on it to the finish to the backsplash countertop, flooring, window treatments, light fixtures, table, chairs, every single thing. And then once you review those, you have a workbook. And that workbook allows you to go and purchase all of these things on your own. And then really it's up to you to find the contractor that's going to you know, really follow through with the job, especially with the kitchen. I mean, that's something where it's like you're not really DIYing that necessarily, but it gives you all the tools to just go and hire someone to do exactly what I have have called out for you. So it's pretty perfect with what you guys are talking about with apartments. Um, I've done two apartments now where I really had to think outside of the box, no pun intended with that, but, you know, how do I, how do I give them something that, that they're going to love and feel at home with. It's something that they can take with them as well. I absolutely love that. Well, I'm, I mean, I think it's it's kind of the coolest thing I have heard of in design. And and while you were talking, I went on your website and I went to the lookbook and you have all different kinds of projects listed there that people can go and look at. Even a studio apartment, which I think is amazing. And well, we only have oh, yeah. like a few minutes. We only have two minutes. Yeah, but okay. So in the couple of minutes we have left, we want to know what Allison's like tips are for those, you know, renters. Like what's a cool thing that somebody can do that can totally change their apartment? Okay, so something I just did for one of my best friends who moved into an apartment, um, the flooring in the kitchen was terrible. So we went to one of the big box stores. And I actually got a lot of slack for this when I put it on Instagram. It was kind of funny. But I did these tiles, just like it was just peel and stick tiles that look like marble, that that really look like marble. And we spent six hours with a box cutter and a bottle of wine, which (laughs) sounds weird, but we just cut around the corners and laid the stuff, and it looks so good. And this stuff right up because she's doing it over um, this it's it's just like roll out vinyl anyway but um, you know she can take it with her and throw it out when she's done and not pay any security fee we also did these really cool tin tile backsplash pieces that go on with two sided tape and again some tin snips some double sided tape and she has the most beautiful backsplash that's awesome. What a great Another, idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I love it, that. And again, not only the kitchen, you know, it's, it's, it goes beyond that. But the kitchen's a big deal because, you know, things are pretty standard in there. So how can you update it? Obviously, cabinet hardware is very simple to do. Um, but the backsplash really can just give an, an enhanced look. And the flooring, you can just put something down temporarily, even area rugs. I know that sounds funny, but it's something that you can spend money on and take with you. And you guys were talking about wallpaper, and I really, really love some of the new papers out there that you can truly take off without damaging the wall. 
And some of those wallpapers are textures, too, and they're paintable. So you can actually put the wall covering up, you can paint it, and it actually it looks like a custom wallpaper that you're not spending a lot of money on and that can come down when you move out. Right, and you're talking about wallpapering a whole wall or a whole room or just maybe a shape or shapes or segments. You can do anything with that stuff. I would say it's either one, yeah, one wall. I'm not a huge fan of accent walls with just paint. I think it's kind of non-committal. So I would do the, you know, either the entire room or pick one wall and paint it with a little texture with that wall covering. Well, I'm not a huge fan that we have to go, but we I do, Allison not, Victoria. But you know what? I have a call out to, to Tim Williams to write a song about a box cutters and a bottle of wine. We got to go. We'll be back with Kim Miles after this. Rebuilding Together believes that everyone deserves to live in a safe and healthy home. For nearly 25 years, Rebuilding Together has provided critical home repairs for low-income homeowners in need. With support from volunteers and skilled professionals, Rebuilding Together affiliates complete 10,000 rebuild projects every year, working to revitalize and stabilize vulnerable neighborhoods and communities across the country. Join Rebuilding Together and rebuild in your community. Find out how you can make a difference and get involved at rebuildingtogether.org. It's time to bring beauty back in your next project by Seeing Red. Born to beat the elements, Western Red Cedar is awesome for outdoor rooms, decks, fences, pergolas, and more. Inside, Cedar is a sweet choice for hope chests, highlight walls, and woodworking projects, big and small. Stable, chemical-free, and safe, Cedar is a natural choice. So bring beauty back to the yard and punch up projects inside the house. For more information and ideas, see red at wrcla.org. And you are inside my Fix It Up Life with my husband, Mark. And my designed, perfectly designed wife, Teresa. Ooh, that's, I have compliments to my parents for that. <laughs> and we are joined, We're doing genetic design now. You know, it's a new thing. Yeah. It's so cool. And yeah. Kim Miles can't join us today because we're going to explore the features and benefits of the film Gattaca. Okay, so the glowing and gorgeous Kim Miles... Hello, how are you? Oh my goodness, what's behind hi. you? Hi, you guys. It's, it's, let's see, can you hear me? Uh, totally. Yeah. Okay, good. This is my first Google Hang, y'all. So it's exciting. Like I'm, I'm being broken in on my Fix It Up life. I love it. And can I tell you how cute you both are? You are both so fancy. I love the red blazer, Teresa. Mark, you're a lucky man. Look how hot your wife is. Like It's so fun. We're just hanging out together. <laughs> I don't know what you wrote, but I hope it's pleasant. That is awesome. And I'm coming right back at you because one, Teresa skipped over your hair, which I want my hair to look like that. And two, wow, yeah, it's awesome. And two, there's someone about ready to jump into your ear. What behind is behind you? you? Okay, so I am sitting in my home office. And behind me is the first work of art my husband and I could ever freaking agree on. We, we do not agree, like, aesthetically, which is, you know, the cosmic joke. So behind me, I will show you, it's called The Gunslinger. Yeah! Yeah! And see that? Bad. We both saw it, and we fell in love instantaneously. It's the first kind of major piece that we bought together, and it's been in our family for like ten years, and I love it. I, I love, I love my little shootout. <laughs> okay, now I know something yeah. new. <laughs> so Kim Miles, KimMiles dot com, Kim Miles, who's on, who's appears on Homemade Simple, Kim Miles, who yes. was a design star winner, Kim Miles is gorgeous. We're talking about apartments, and yeah, I've I, got a lot of I got a lot of ramp up questions. We have so, I, so whatever many. Whatever she says, I'm going to interrupt her. Just and the so window you know. covering yeah, safety yeah. council too. I think that's amazing that you're partnering with them. But anyway, yeah, they are amazing. Design should never kill your babies. Bottom line, it's so important to raise awareness for sure. Design should not kill your babies. You have people that kill people on your walls, though. Okay, give me, give. I didn't the, know the about shootout. this. Yeah. Oh! 
give, give me a minute on the safety. Because I have so many things to ask you, but that is really important. Want to get to that. We'll do frowny face. You know, Six, serious newscaster. 60 seconds of safety. Yeah. 60 seconds of safety. Brought to you by you. It's, listen, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is that children get strangled to death every year on cords, on, you know, vertical blind cords, on just on cords, something as simple as a cord was completely avoidable. And, you know, as somebody who makes my living teaching people how to live beautifully and make a beautiful home, it felt like a really just a natural project to get involved with with them. I just really felt like, you know what, this is messaging that I, I'm child free. I don't think about it, but most of America, most of the world, are, they're having babies out there and they want to live in a space that looks like them and feels fabulous and dressing your windows is a huge part of that. Um, but it's amazing how unsafe some of those choices are. So while you have small children at home going court free, going cordless, making those choices, just eliminate that risk, I think is really, really important. October was court safety month. Um, so yeah, I partnered with them and it's just been really nice to kind of use the spotlight that I have to, to get the word out about something that, that I think is really, really key. It's something people don't think about at all, but it happens way too much. Don't well, ask we, a follow-up question. No, I'm having a nervous kids. breakdown. We have kids and um, we do have cords in our, our bedroom. But we don't, mm -hmm. I've, I've made, actually, I don't know if you've noticed this, but we don't have cords downstairs. I don't notice what's happening. Okay, so anywho, but Mark actually had an incident with the cat because of a cord in the... Um, yeah, he got caught. In our bedroom. Yeah, it, ha it happened oh. to us with a cat who <laughs> slashed the bejesus out of me. Yes, because he got tried caught up, he couldn't get out. Yeah. It, he was like a wild animal, it was crazy. Okay, so now yeah. I'm just segueing. Because I'm seriously going to have a heart attack right let's, now. Let's go to Land of the Happy. How do we make apartments beautiful? How do we deal with those stupid vertical blinds and those ugly light fixtures on the... And the popcorn yeah. ceiling at Own TV yeah. with Amy Devers, Real Homemade Simple. <laughs> Why was the popcorn <laughs> ceiling ever good? Well, I, I tuned in at the top of the show, and Teresa, you were like, you can't... When you read, you can't change you know, all the, the hindrances, right? Which is kind of what the culture teaches us, which is if you're renting, you're screwed. You can't have the house of your dreams. You can't make it look the way you want it to look. And I feel like, you know what? I am a lifelong renter. My parents always rented. I owned a house for like five minutes and I sold that mother because I was like, you know what? I don't like being awake late at night worrying about my mortgage. Like, I don't like it. And what's interesting Hopefully, is I feel like, you know, just economically, people need the freedom to be able to follow the job, follow the money, not being tied down to a piece of real estate is a really key factor in that. And then I read this statistic the other day, which I was staring, the Blackstone Group, which is the Wall Street Institute, they are buying a snap million dollars a week worth of rental. They are not buying them to put them. They are buying them as rentals because it is a huge market. It is a booming market. So many people are choosing the mortgage-free lifestyle, whether it's millennials, whether it's retirees or empty nesters, and they just want to be free. So, I, you know, to me, I feel like, listen, I want to banish the whole redheaded stepchild of the design world and be like, we can make it whatever we want. You know, as far as painting. I'm sitting in a rental right now, you guys. Look at my wall color. This is mosaic tile, Bear's mosaic tile. I love it. I get compliments on it all the time. That's a really intense color. As far as not being able to paint because you won't get your security deposit back, uh-uh. Check the laws. Like, in, in California, I believe landlords have to repaint every two to three years. Legally, they have to repaint. They cannot hold you deposit for that. So if you're planning on staying in a rental for any length of time at all, if that's where you're going to nest for a minute, like... Pick up the paintbrush. And if you don't feel like picking up the paintbrush, if you don't want to have, you know, the little party, which, by the way, Alice and Victoria, she needs to know that she, that's the name of her memoir, a box cutter and a bottle of wine. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious when she said that about her, her little linoleum tiles, you know, box cutter and a bottle of wine. I'm like, that's a life story right there. <laughs> but bottom line is, you know, that kind of DOA spirit really saying, you know what, I can make some temporary changes and temporary fixes, they're easy to do, it's a small amount of sweat equity, it's not a big deal. Even laying a huge bright carpet, um, my apartment was just featured on apartment therapy in October, 
And I got a ton of mail because in my living room, I have a fuchsia area rug. It is so vivid. Um, I love vivid color. I'm not scared of it. But part of what I like is that it casts a reflection on my walls that is really warm. So I haven't painted my walls the color in the living room. They're pure white. But that rug is giving me a reflection of a little bit of warmth. So that's a great trick. Any rug that you put down, whether it is hot pink, whether it is moss green, it doesn't matter what you pick. If you're in a white space, it's reflecting up. So that's a great way to get a little color without painting. And it's something that you can take with you. So many tricks, you guys. So many tricks and not enough time. It's uh, it's unfortunate, I, I, Kim, that uh, you're such a dud. I mean, I, I don't I, – like it's just crying up – Pull teeth trying to get you to be passionate about what you do and where you live I, and your ethos. I, I, I seriously, I apologize. I almost dozed off. I, I kind of do get the apartment next to yours so that I can borrow sugar from you every day and then just sit you there should and listen steal, to you. Should steal your carpet. What is me or borrowing a glass of red wine Teresa. just so you know like that's how i roll do you have so, box cutters I too wine, so i always have that do you have wine and box cutters because i think they're like an essential now yeah yeah we can rock it well in our hide kit we do have some utility knives that we're yeah, giving away we stuff that people need right. the, the snap off blades mm -hmm. so you can Very cut cool flooring you can cut pieces of drywall you can cut whatever you need to cut you can open boxes you don't need box cutter that just alliterates you mean boxes of wine you can open but you're not supposed to open those uh, <laughs> see inside the box that's the shape of the liquid really if you change the shape of that say by a hole you have to drink really fast <laughs> So, Kim, I played rugby for a long time, and I don't know if you've been exposed oh, to that no. culture. No. But cutting things open and drinking them as fast as possible is part of that. We're we're respected in the sports world. Yes, yes. Really? Yeah. Respected. I don't know if you guys like to like dump buckets of ice on each other. Is that a rugby thing or is that just a football thing? Which was that? I didn't. Buckets of ice. Buckets. Oh no, that's buckets that. Of ice. <laughs> we start ten miles past that. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have. There's not a lot of friends. That's why. That's why it's not football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I. I'm learning something new every day. I will I'm talk. Life, you guys. I will talk with you about rugby and gunfighting all day long. But. Oh, I'm gonna have some coffee. But pot. Seriously, popcorn ceilings. Whether you own your apartment or you rent it, yeah. they're a builder trick. It's instead of a third coat of drywall and instead of sanding that, I'm sorry, third coat of drywall compound, instead of sanding that yeah. and blah, 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 you just do two coats, don't sand it, throw that on there. Yeah. And you yeah. took one down. Is that, because I saw that yeah. on your, on your Twitter. Yeah, look, I, I, I think popcorn ceilings are the devil. I really do. And I think that they are hideous. I have a bad relationship with them because when I was 10 years old, I was one of those kids that would read in my bed with a flashlight, like voracious reader. And we were living in a rental that had a popcorn ceiling. And I kid you not, a piece of the popcorn ceiling fell down from the sky, landed in my eyeball, lacerated my cornea. I had to go to the emergency room. Like popcorn ceilings, man. They have not done me right ever, ever, ever. So I don't like them. I don't like them at all. Sometimes you're stuck with them. But I feel like I have I have dedicated my life in memoriam of my unscarred eyeball back when it was pure and fresh and new to covering those feelings. And you can have, there are a lot of options. So on Homemade Simple, which is on OWN, which by the way, one of my episodes is airing this Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern. Gotta plug the show, y'all. Working for Oprah. Um, but one of the things that I tackle is popcorn ceilings again and again because it's so common. Um, I have covered them with styrofoam ceiling tiles. We all know like the tin tiles, that classic look. Um, they now make them in styrofoam. So they, are, they weigh nothing. You can pop them up. You can take them down. You're not doing any damage, but you're completely covering them, and that styrofoam is paintable, kind of like what Allison was talking about with the paintable wallpaper. So I think that's a great trick. 
I have covered them with bamboo. I did a, um, a, a living room space with kind of like a tropical getaway space. I did bamboo fencing. And we popped that in with a staple gun. We trimmed it off with a little edger board. It was gorgeous, finished, completely covered. It felt like you were on a Hawaiian vacation. Um, I am a huge fan of hanging window treatment hardware, so just kind of, you know, the rod of a window treatment all along the perimeter of the wall, and then you loop up large pieces of fabric to tent the room. Um, with that, if it's going to be anywhere near a light fixture, obviously you want fire safe fabric, search. Um, but I feel like there are a lot of options. You don't have to live with the stupid popcorn. You don't. And you don't have to live with the bad the bad fixtures. You know, in in my apartment on apartment therapy, you can see in the room that I'm actually in, there is I have a huge Chinese um, paper lantern ball uh, that is hiding a truly hideous fixture. You would never know it's under there. But it is heinous and appalling and embarrassing, and I hate it so much. And I just covered it. It's like a slip cover. So I feel like, listen, you don't always have to look at everything. You can come up with options. Can you take over my job we, on my well, fix-it-up life? We only have, like, 30 seconds it, left, but I, I have to say, like... Your brain is so like elastic and exciting and fun and I can't imagine that you're never not inspired and creating and going, Oh my gosh, we could do that, we could do this, we could do that. Like yeah. it's just nonstop creativity and it's awesome. So if you guys are not following Kim Miles, you need to Kim Miles dot com, Facebook dot com, Kimmy L Designs at Kim Miles Designs on Twitter. We're shooting off to a break. We'll be back with more of my Fix It Up Life. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. <laughs> Replacing a roof is a major investment. When considering your options, make sure to investigate synthetic roofing slate and shake tiles from DaVinci Roofscapes. Cost-effective and made to last, DaVinci's weather-resistant roofing tiles have a 50-year warranty. A DaVinci roof provides long-term comfort and security along with adding great beauty to the exterior. It's no wonder thousands of homeowners have chosen DaVinci Slate and Shake Tiles. For more information, visit DaVinciRoofscapes.com or call 1-800-328-4624. Rebuilding Together believes that everyone deserves to live in a safe and healthy home. For nearly 25 years, Rebuilding Together has provided critical home repair for low-income homeowners in need. With support from volunteers and skilled professionals, Rebuilding Together affiliates complete 10,000 rebuild projects every year, working to revitalize and stabilize vulnerable neighborhoods and communities across the country. Join Rebuilding Together and rebuild in your community. Find out how you can make a difference and get involved at rebuildingtogether.org. Welcome to my Fix It Up Life with my husband, Mark. And my wife, Teresa, and I'm inspired style right now. You are? <laughs> well, I think, wait a second. I think we have, our lineup might be a little bit off because I think Rhoda's on. I'm still inspired style. Oh! Uh, you can be inspired, darling, if you would like, but I think that we're all about Southern hospitality at this particular time. All right, I mean, if we have to. <laughs> if we have to. <laughs> Yeah, you know what, Rhoda from Southern Hospitality, Rhoda How Vickers, you? if you want to come in, I mean, go ahead, make yourself I'm great. Really? Th is that <laughs> how you are? You said at the top of the hour that you were going to not have any Southern Hospitality because you are from Cape Cod. Is this how you do? That's Hospitality was invented in New England, just want you to know that. I don't think it was. <laughs> I'm from Maryland, and so I, you know, it's south of the Mason-Dixon line, and I'm legally allowed to say y'all. Rhoda, where where do you chime in on this? Because I'm right, and I'll just, um, you know, listen to your arguments. <laughs> well, true, ho true Southern hospitality is definitely from the South. That's where it originated. But I'm sure you guys have probably, or y'all, I'm going to say y'all because that's the way I talk, but um, y'all can borrow Southern hospitality, but it definitely originated here in the South. What is it? <laughs> what, I what is it? that when people say Southern hospitality, they're referring to? 
They're referring to a way of life, a culture, just a warm and welcoming feel that most Southerners have. I mean, it's just the way it is. If you're born and raised in the South, it's just a different way of life, a different culture. We, uh, we're all about family. We're all about uh, where we grew up. Um, food is a big part of that. So it's, just, it's really just a, a Southern culture. And we, we are, when we're raised in it, it, it doesn't go away. And when, we're very friendly down here. That, that's true. If you're walking, if you're out on the street, people will more than likely say hello to you. And that doesn't always happen in other parts of the country. But no. We are friendly. Very and, friendly. No, and I and resent that. Our friend, that. Greg DiBernardo from Bergen Deck. Well, now he's not Bergen Decks anymore because he moved from New Jersey recently. He's peach tree decks. And he moved from New Jersey, sold his business, bought a new business in Atlanta. And we saw him recently. And he said, it's so weird being here in Atlanta because people wake up happy. Everybody's waking up happy. And then they're happy all day long. And he said everybody that, you know, is used to dealing with, you know, in New Jersey is they wake up angry and then they try to find more reasons to be mad all day. Yeah. So he's like, I don't understand it. Everyone's smiling at me and saying nice things. <laughs> well, it's true. That's the way it is down here. So... Well, it's a you, great place to live, great place to be raised. You have kindly welcomed us into your world of the Southern Hospitality blog and to talk about renter and apartment design tips and tricks, those small space things, yes. those things that you can do to make a place, maybe that's not yours, yours, or a place that is yours, but doesn't have a yard, doesn't have those things that the house we right. all talk about all the time has. And I'm kind of curious to talk about, like, you're very into vintage and, you know, fixer-upper kind of stuff, too. So, you know, bringing those elements yeah. into some small spaces, is, is, I think it's kind of fun. So what would you suggest to renters to do? Well, definitely if they can paint. I, paint is my number one secret weapon for sure. Um, I mean, I paint anything and everything. So if they can paint things, then that's a great way to change things. If, if they... If they can paint the walls, fine. But if they can't paint the walls, then um, use paint for furniture. Change furniture pieces. Um, change out fabrics and add color in fabrics, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of small space decorating ideas out there, and it's just a matter of finding something that works for them. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of architectural details that I love to use, but renters can't always change permanent fixtures and all so i would say i would say rugs and fabrics pillows things like that that's the quickest way to get a personalized space in a rental space and painting furniture that kind of thing can can really add a lot of pizzazz to a room and now we're coming up the everyone's thinking about thanksgiving right now and you know for wait that's coming up it, hold on a second i gotta order my christmas <laughs> gifts stand by it's no thanksgiving no, that's when I order them. <laughs> On Thanksgiving? For Thanksgiving? Okay, it's just look, I'm busy right now. I hope just if you want to just use the TV. I have absolutely no idea what's going on <laughs> next to me, but I wanted to ask you for ideas about Thanksgiving and, you know, people that have small spaces that are entertaining and, you know, thinking about like your tablescape and all those other kinds of things. You know, are there is there something that right. you're working on right now that we can get inspired by? Yeah, I wish I had a picture to show you really quick, but I don't think I sent her that picture. I just did a dining room tablescape in my dining room, and I used fresh cut branches of leaves that were turning outside, reds and golds, those pretty yellow and gold leaves, I mean yellow and red leaves that are outside right now. So, um, and my tablescape turned out beautiful. I wish I could show it to you quickly, but I don't know if we can share on here. Can we do that? Are you on we a laptop? We probably can't right now, but we'll yeah, post it up I'm on, on my our laptop. Yeah, yeah, we'll post it up on our our post and stuff later on, so people can see. But um, okay, yeah. yeah, I just posted that last week, but it's um, it's under Thanksgiving table setting ideas. Okay, and. Um, so anyway, that's a real quick tip. I have some, if you've got vases sitting around, it's a great way to just get a quick um, Thanksgiving, pretty Thanksgiving scene on your table. Just go and cut those branches, stick them in water, and um, 
put it up on a riser or, or a, a cake stand kind of pedestal, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I love to use a lot of nat- natural decorating. So I'm always picking up acorns and pine cones and things like that. So those are fun to decorate with. And those cost nothing if you go outside, take a stroll through the woods. It's actually kind of a fun activity to do with kids, too. I've been thinking lately about making some kind of, like, leaf art with our six-year-old. Cause, yeah. You know, because all the beautiful leaves are falling from the trees and, the, like, the colors. It's just so dramatic, yeah. and it's an easy little project to do that could really be a cool little feature uh, for yeah. Thanksgiving. The, the Japanese maples are turning up here, and they're, like, literally, like, explosions. Yeah around here and i don't know yeah, if the they've changed trees, with they you have, they have the best colors by far the maples they do yeah well tell us i can imagine that north it's probably even better than it is in the south i know you all get a lot of pretty color up there faster than we do yeah we we are very lucky and i keep saying to mark i want to do some leaf peeping but i don't know if he knows what it, do you know leaf peeping that was invented in new england everything was invented in new england <laughs> according to my husband <laughs> But no, I want to talk a little bit about your blog because you have a lot of really cool stuff that you've done there, you know, with updating different rooms and things and ideas. And is there a couple of ones that you want to sort of point us in the direction of so that people can find out more inspiration? Well, so, yeah, I would love to talk about that. Um, I, I bought a foreclosed fixer-upper house about two and a half years ago, and my dad... Um, he's elderly. He's in his 80s. My dad and I did a lot of the renovating ourselves. So we spent six months renovating this house. We hired out the big projects, but we did a whole lot of the work ourselves, too. So it went from a real ugly duckling to a beautiful swan. That's the way I describe it now. So um, we did a ton of projects. We added board and batten where there was nothing. We added, um, I gutted the kitchen and did a complete makeover in there with a an Ikea kitchen, and it turned out fabulous. I did a subway tile backsplash. We did that ourselves. And then um, just the whole house has had a revamp. So um, there's a lot of really good posts on my blog all about that renovation process. And and all the I blogged every single project that I did during those six months. And then after I moved in, I continued to have projects that I blogged about. So there is a lot of information over there and some great projects from um, a laundry room that was an absolute pit it was it had an open ceiling and concrete floors and was just pathetic and then i took that and with paint completely changed the look of that space so it's one it's a space oh there it is <laughs> it's a space i'm very proud of now that's the beautiful picture was horrible horrible that is and the, beautiful. the blog is southern hospitality blog.com and what a really fun experience to have with your dad too Oh, that's great stuff. It, has it really been. is. Yeah, it has been. That's my wonderful. readers have fallen in love with my dad. He's like the hero now. So Aww. it's been a fun part, a fun addition to my blog, having him be so popular with my readers. Well, you've got to check out Southern Hospitality Blog. And yeah. I, I want to know, I see I'm, a, I'm a, a tab A slot B geek. I love putting things together. And the IKEA uh-huh. kitchens, sometimes people really like them. And other times people have a nervous breakdown. So in about 22 <laughs> seconds, uh-huh. which is about what we have left, 19, 18, okay. was putting it together a good experience for you? You know, it wasn't so bad. Once we got the first one together, my dad and I put them all together. It took us probably about, I think, two days to put them all together. And I had them stored in my living room. And then I did hire an installer to come put put them up. We were not confident in being able to then install them on the wall. But once you put one together, it's a piece of cake after that. So it's really not so bad. Wow. Awesome. Which you can have when you're welcome to the Southern <gasps> Hospitality blog. Oh. We've enjoyed having you so much, Rhoda. Check her out at southernhospitalityblog.com. We got to go, but yes. stay with us. We'll be back with more apartment design solutions right after this. Standing walls before you paint. Do it the hide way, not the hard way, with Hyde's dusty sander. Dry back and go. No dry dust on your furniture. No tough cleanup when you're done. Buy online at Amazon.com. You're in it. 
It's my fix. We are here. We're Have back. no fear. We are here, and we are inspired to style now, Mark. I know you wanted to do this earlier because I did. Because you are all inspired. I'm inspired to be jealous right now. And the inspiration that you have sometimes comes at the most weird times. Like when sometimes, because I have very bad eyesight when I take my contacts <laughs> out at night. And you put like bow ties on when you get in bed. And I don't see them until I'm actually like right here. And I'm like, whoa, what is that? The inspiration takes over in a very weird way. Ariane Belazare, inspired to style. I am sure I have totally trashed your name, which yes. I love and is my first. <laughs> it's my first layer because I love your name. You all. It's a hard name to have, especially with an email address. Yeah, but uh, it is Ariane Belazare. Nice. That's nice. And your backdrop, by the way, is gorgeous. Yes. The four okay, pictures. Oh, we are having a little bit of audio trouble, though. You're li okay. No, we can still hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, that's better. That's it. Ah. That's it. So you, and to to describe this to people who might be listening and not watching the YouTube video later, you have, am I seeing this right? You've got six images on the wall in frames, and then like a foot in front of them, you've hung some items. Yes. So there are six frames and then two sunburst mirrors hung in front of them to create one large visual effect. Huh. Wow. That's really pretty. That gives it some depth. Yeah. That's really cool. That I would hit really my head cool. on that every yeah. day. Yeah, you, you would. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really psyched to talk to you because, well... When I read that you were obsessed with redecorating your college apartment over and over and over and over again, I said, this girl's going to have some really good ideas because if you were obsessed with it doing it then, and I imagine that all the products and stuff that we have access to now have grown, that I, I you just have to bring it. Like, what should people be doing in their college apartments? Because just yeah, yeah. I mean, what we're ready. Can, what can you do in the block box? Well, what I would say is embrace that time of college living because it's the only time you can decorate truly for yourself. You're not compromising. You're not thinking about your hobbies, needs, your kids' needs. It's really all about you and your personality. So um, for me. Figure out what colors inspire you. Bring in the textures with the patterns of print. Really easy things like flags, face prints, throw pillows. Um, and then if you want to think about artwork, we have very good, amazing, uh, like a plethora of temporary hanging positions where you can just, you know, just put up a little temporary hangers, put up your framed photos or your canvas art, um, and really go to town in ways that I, I didn't have access to. When I was in college, you know, I was just kind of like peacefully looking at myself, and you know, I would occasionally hang something along, hoping, praying that I could get into the back. It was all this. <laughs> oh man! Now, so in college, or for a young person who obviously has no taste, most young people, myself mostly included. Not Ariane. Not Ariane. Yeah. I'm trying to exclude her from, from that blanket statement. I mean, even you just looking at her name is beautiful. That's what, it's what I started at. I understand. Like, my name is not beautiful to look at at all. I'm kind of sad. Thank you so much. And I'm finally embracing it. I hate my name. I absolutely hate it. There's no Ariane figuring things me. There's help for Ariane. <laughs> Yeah, I'm embracing the uniqueness of it. It is a uniqueness, but that's like that Johnny Cash song, A Boy Named Sue. Oh, no, it's not. That's uh, bad. Name him anything, <laughs> Bill or George or anything. Now, our, so our last name is hard to say, too, so we get all – you don't even want to know when we, like, go to a hotel. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Oh. Clemenes. Like, those letters aren't even in the word. Honey. She gets it. She's with. She feels uh, all right, me. Let's let's pull back the rage. She feels me. Let's feel. Yeah. She feels me. Let's get back into design. All right. 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 Okay. So. I would say that you guys wanted to talk about wallpaper though, because I think there's just so many smart temporary solutions out there to really bring that element into your space. Yeah, temporary wallpaper. I think. 
is something that is absolutely amazing. But at the same time, like our um, friend Patrick Hamilton said on Twitter, is that he kn- he doesn't know anyone that's actually taken down temporary yeah, it's wallpaper. Temporary permanent. Yeah. Temporary permanent. But, you know, then there are also those decals. We've been, we started with, I don't know where you're going with this. I'm just going to let you. I'm fascinated. You know what? I'm sitting back here and I'm just going to let you talk decals all day long. Well, the first time I heard about temporary wallpaper, it was in reference to like kids' rooms. And then you can like put stuff up on their walls. Like we have in our six year old's room, we have like the cars from Mm -hmm. the Disney cars on as well yeah. so you can like put stuff up that for kids but now it's a whole nother like evolution of style that is beyond what i originally thought it was all about it was about trying to serve your child's changing 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 tastes i say paint the room black just just paint it black boy girl doesn't matter black you want to write on the walls i don't care i'll put more black paint on it you're bringing it into open into all of the fun of design and that kind of creativity and embracing your own, you know, personality. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I agree with her. It's true. Now, in your design, your design ethos, so we only can see a little bit of your world behind you, which we said earlier that we like. Are, are you like a, a bright color, an earthy tone? Like, where, where do you land in the color spectrum? I am definitely not afraid of color. I love bright colors. I love patterns and prints as well. So I'll let them do the job of kind of bringing a little bit that to the face. But for me, I think if you wanted to describe my design style, it would definitely be livable look. Like I want that rich, elevated look, but I want you to not be afraid to sit down when you come in. I just want it to be kind of very cool and chic, very inviting at the same time. So for me, I will play off of a really neutral foundation of colors and then add in my tops with my rugs, my pillows. Um, and you can see pictures of kind of the way I started to um, bring those things into my new home on my blog as I'm that. And you also have with the Design Network too. Now what are you doing with, yeah. with them? Uh, that was a really fun development. It is where I've been able to share with my readers and my viewers a visual of me really kind of talking them through this design process. You're really building on the foundation. So everybody wants to go in and buy the sofa, buy the pillow, get the sunburst mirror, and then they get the thing to home and they're like, how does it work? So my team on the design team has been really teaching them the whole foundational thought process that has to happen before you go out to shop. You know, figuring out whether that thing has a space, doing the space play, making sure the sofa fits, all those little things that we as design professionals know to think through, I share that on my channel in my little snippet video. That is so smart because I think a lot of people do that, and I and I think that that's a mistake that you make that people make. You know, they fall in love with the couch or the chair or whatever it is, and then they get it into their house, or they can't even get it into their house because it won't fit through the doorway, and then you're like, oh no, yeah. As the um, pragmatism officer for my Fix It Up Life, when we talk about design, it's constantly color and fear and psychology and love and unicorns start flying out of the walls. Teddy, there's I am surrounded in pillows right now. I don't I can't even touch the floor. He just has this warm glow around him. Yeah. But it's just it's like exudes his it's creative just, it's, soul. It's my warmth. I have it. Everybody <laughs> says so. jump in there but i wanted to pick up on something that you said which is how important is actually as you begin this whole process and your videos on that design you were network. talking about on design neck where you were talking about first thing you said was tape measure you didn't say color you didn't it was like tape measure like is, is that like almost your go-to to see if the inspiration's even gonna happen Work in your space. It's just don't, don't work your heart over it. I mean, make sure that it's going to have some really strong 
so much in the head of actually being able to be pulled off. But absolutely. You know, I was sit there with a notepad and sketch out my idea. And I am not Picasso. I mean, I'll just sketch it out, make sure it, it, it works on paper, all the elements are, are in place, get all measured. I'll even take just take paper's tape to make sure that the tape will fit or kind of, you know, that it'll be a good juxtaposition between everything else that's in the room. But all of that happens before I walk out the door and make the purchase. It has to. Otherwise, I'm not really going to be uh, satisfied with the space because my dream or my vision can become a reality. Well, I'm not satisfied that we are coming up to a break. Oh, we are. Ariane Belisair, who's inspired yeah. to style.com. I am. I am. We're going to have to have you back because you are an absolute delight and joy and just Thank like you. exude I such know. happiness. <laughs> Teresa actually had a moment of silence, which is uncommon. We do have to take a break. We'll be back with more of it. More. My fix it up life. Time to bring beauty back in your next project by seeing red. Born to beat the elements, Western Red Cedar is awesome for outdoor rooms, decks, fences, pergolas, and more. Inside, Cedar's a sweet choice for hope. Chest hall. Chemical free and safe, Cedar's a natural choice. So bring beauty back to the yard and punch up the house. For more information and ideas, see red at wrcla.org. Sanding walls before you paint? Do it the hide way, not the hard way, with Hyde Dust Free Sander. Attach to your wet dry vac and go. No drywall dust on your furniture, no tough cleanup when you're done. Buy online at Amazon.com. I'm doing great. How are you, Mark? I, I love the song segues. I'm doing fantastic because we get to give away our hide apartment apartment dweller survival pack i kind of feel like we should be putting in like trail mix with that though <laughs> i don't know why trail mix. i feel like we should put in some kind of like machete some trail mix we should put in less stroud from survivor man Oh yeah, one of those things, those um, bottles that converts urine into drinking water, you know, that people take on trips. Yeah, I took one I of those to why. Vegas last time. Because <laughs> you never know, in, in your apartment, the hallways could be really long. You know the stadium pal? <laughs> just just google it yourself i refuse to well, explain it i have to it. say that the, the funniest thing that we heard um about temporary wallpaper on social networking on our website was from barbara viteri who is insanely creative and hilarious and if you don't follow her you have to prolific but she said that temporary wallpaper is like a biori strip for walls do you know what that is a what strip those like things you put on your nose to get rid of blackheads, like you put it on, <laughs> and you let it dry, and you and it's anyway. She's hilarious and strange, and we love her. And she was on the show. Oh, you can meet by watching. Yes, she was on the, the Man Caves episode from a few weeks ago. But we have a winner, and our winner is Judy. Judy said that she wasn't a fan of temporary wallpaper for a lot of sense, but she said that she loves us, so I think she won. And well, I think I'm we gonna should... double down. What's that? Chris Prudy also has problems with orange peel texture drywall where he lives. Yeah. So he doesn't end around with that. We're going to give away two. two. We're going to give one to Judy and one to Chris. We're pretty generous, guys. Double down. So you know what? Follow us on Twitter because we love talking with you. Facebook, Google+, Plus, all the fun places. YouTube. Ask us questions. Info at myfixituplife.com. Watch our videos on YouTube. Watch this video on YouTube. Yeah, and we'll be back. When? With another episode of My Fix It Up Life. What? Thanks, guys. Bye.